Okay, so the Portrait Studio update is officially out, and Portrait Studio looks beautiful. Um, it has a numerous amount of, uh, and each of these has a sub, some of these have a subcategory, like they have more uh, branched out versions of each um, uh, style of model. But you got just lots and lots of models to work from, and I'll be teaching with Portrait Studio today to show you guys exactly where um, all this comes from. So all these shadows, all these, all this fundamental stuff, where it all comes from, and you see it live in front of you. So, for the main thing about Portrait, portrait Studio, of course, is the portraits, um, and I'm going to be using them today to talk about some of the issues you guys have in your 14-day challenges. Okay, so let me load those in. <coughs> I'm very sick today. I'm so sorry about how bad I sound. Blame it on this New York weather. Okay. So let us get started. This piece is too bright. So many problems. There's so many problems with this piece. I don't know where to start. And considering that it's your day three and you haven't yet had someone advise you against using, um, uh, shoes, against using, um, all desktop area. Apply. Okay. Is this going to be too fast for me? No, it's perfect. Um, so I can't believe someone hasn't advised you against using this um, really, really light background. So I'm just going to be darkening that a little bit, um, just like so, and then erasing away at that layer so we can get just the face separated. And I don't think this is a really efficient way to do it, but... My mouse is extra fast today because I'm still sorting out why my monitors are doing this weird thing with my screen share mouse. My mouse disappears when I'm using screen share on Google Plus or something. So um, bear with me for the super fast lightning speed mouse cursor. It'll make me make mistakes, which are not good. All right, so I'm just cleaning this up. Over here, go back into darken. Um, I should be able to just disconnect my monitor, correct? Like I should just be able to disconnect it. So sorry. All desktop area, apply. Um, one moment, please. Let me disconnect this stinking monitor. Identify three, two. All right, three, one. I'm gonna just disable. Disable. Disconnect this display. All right, everything has probably gone haywire now, I think. Um, but I'm going to keep changes and all desktop area, okay. I think everything is good now. You guys can still see my monitor. And yeah, that's it. All right, so yeah, again, I'm just darkening around here. Yeah, I still have pen pressure. I have lovely on. Okay, and I'm just going to slowly, gradually raise it out. Typically, the light environment room should be brighter than the object. Um, and so the object in this case right now is kind of brighter than the room. So we're going to have to darken the object now. So we brought down the, the background light significantly, uh, but not all the way. And next up would be just darkening the character. And this is as simple as kind of just throwing this value and being very, very selective where we add the highlight. I'm not looking at the comments. I will look at them in a second. Then we have these really beautiful eyes. I mean, these eyes are just so beautiful. And the, the problem here is that you are missing out on some other units that make the eye feel realistic. So you've got the design of the eye and the way you draw it, the kind of width to the eyelid, the tilt in the eye. That's how you bring in character to the eye. But when you're missing out cast shadows, you're not, cast shadows are like the pointer that proves this thing exists. They point at your painting and say this thing is real because it's, it has the ability to get in the way of light. So the, the fact that the eyebrow bones can get in the way of, so I set up a little model here and what I did was, I took a screenshot from Porsche Studio, but I'll show you one second what I mean by that. So right now, you have a cast shadow for the nose that is this long, a 
about. Um, it's a bit softer. The slider for softening shadows isn't in yet. It'll be in in part two of the update. We didn't want to delay the update any longer, so we divided it into two parts. That way you guys get the models, but you also get some more stuff, including the movable mannequin soon. But you see how the cast shadow is pretty long. You just have to look at the navigator. It hits the lip line. It's soft, though, and that's fine. But if the sh cast shadow hit the lip line, look at the cast shadow that also represents the same consistent light source around the eye socket. So what you did was you didn't cast shadows off of this. And that is the biggest problem that you have here. That you just expose the entirety of the upper eyelid as if the upper eyelid like um, sneaks out of the, only the upper eyelid, which is kind of weird because you have a cast shadow off the upper eyelid on the eyeball. But it's like only the upper eyelid snuck out of the cast shadow of the eye socket. And the eye socket is a neighborhood. It's a, it's a dark cavity. It's a recessed neighborhood of values. It doesn't just, you know, relieve certain objects from it. And then you're missing some major anatomical components here. You have it in one eye, not really in the other. And this catches some light because it's moist. And then we're doing the other side. So the eye has two corners to it. The cast shadow for the upper eyelid on the white of the eye is way too dark. You can keep the pupil dark and the iris, but you cannot just darken on the white. The cast shadow belongs to the object receiving it, and in this case, the object receiving it is the eyeball. And that means that the eyeball is too bright to allow that cast shadow to drop so low. So you kind of, it's not really symbolic because you have a lower eyelid, and that's kind of where I look to when I try to see if a character, if, if an artist is painting symbolically. If they're missing an eyelid and lower eyelid, it's, it's a sign that they're painting symbolically. We look back to this. I took a screenshot of it earlier. Actually, this one's bigger. It's much better. So just waiting for my screenshot here. And what we're seeing is only the front part of the face right here from this line to this line. I don't know if you guys can see my cursor. Yes, you can. Um, from this line here all the way to this line is bright. Out here, there's like this L shape of the eye socket moving into the temple. It's exactly the same on the other side. And look at the cheekbone as well. The cheeks don't just get bright out here. It's only over here really that this like solar panel tilt towards the light source happens. And then we go into dark and light and dark and light. And you just have patterns of dark and light, dark and light executed either with edges or with radial shading. And that's all you really have to remember. And by day three for a 14 day challenge, you should be radially shading. You should be at least, no, no, maybe radial shading is a little bit more advanced, but you should be um, identifying the sides of the head from the front parts of the head. And remember that the head is a cube. Now for those who, who to, for whom this is common knowledge, just bear with me. So these are the sides of the head right here. And this is the front. And so all of this gets the light. These sides get the dark. So that's why I always recommend, even if it's common knowledge to you, try cubes tilted in different angles. It really will come back and help you in your form studies, come back and help you with your portraits. Because this student is amazing at eyes. Mm, a little bit falling off with the lips. Getting there with the nose. But the entire head shape is missing geometric uh, signatures. And that's how you know that you are uh, improving unevenly. And a lot of artists improve unevenly. A lot of artists are really good at one thing or the other. But if you're my student, you don't improve unevenly to that extent. If you're my student, I make sure that you understand there's a, there's a cube under everything. Even a sphere um, underneath it is a cube. If you think about it, because a cube is essentially a third dimension representative. And to represent the third dimension, you need a cube. And everything exists with three dimensions in this universe, anyway. All right, so I'm creating these limitations with blocking in. I find basically the temple line around the eyebrows, and I create all these limitations here. These will be blended out. Don't worry too much about it being too sharp. It's really not your business to be polishing this early in the painting. Then we've got another really, really important cast shadow, this really, really important shadow um, around the halfway point. So squint your eyes and you can see that the face recedes into shadow. The highlight on the chin is not similar to the highlight on the nose or the cheeks. And nothing, nothing is nearly as, as bright, as, except for the nose, as the um, forehead. 
And so I forgot how to rotate. There we go. And so you can see that the chin is at the level of the forehead. The forehead might be receding, but it's receding towards the light source, which is top down. See this little symbol right here? It represents the direction of the light source. So this is that solar panel, solar panel for the cheek, solar panel for the top of the head. Usually this whole area, we don't count it as a light spot because there's hair here, um, usually in our characters. But all the way far away from all of this is the little chin and it's not catching as much light. But this doesn't just start at the chin. At the point where it starts receding is just above the upper lip. At the halfway point of the upper, upper lip, that's when that beard shadow starts. And I call it a beard shadow to help students remember, but it's just really similar to a beard. We just throw a big beard and we are deleting wherever we have an elevation. So the upper lip, lower lip, the top of the lower lip, the top of the upper lip, the upper lip region, meaning the area near the nose, and then the top of the chin, ever so slightly. Over here, over here. So it still feels extremely overexposed, um, but it's definitely a step forward from where it was before when we started, and I'll show you in a second. Now I'm just smudging really, really low strength. Please remember that smudge, my smudge brushes won't work. Any smudging won't work unless you have low strength. Using it on high strength is like smudging in real life but with all of your finger strength, which is not right. You're just going to rip your paper in half. All right, now, what's the rule about lips? Does anyone remember it? What's the rule about rendering lips? I know one of you remembers it. Abu's beard specifically. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Abu's beard specifically. Now, we have all this area exposed to the light. I am going to give shadows on either side of the nose, but they're nowhere near the shadows of the eye socket. No value sharing is happening. I'm going to give the nose some pigmentation using, using the darken yeah, cylinder, but what do I say about the way to render them? So that's the geometric anatomy. Yes, it's the cylinder. But what don't over render lips? Exactly. Well, what's the term specifically? What do I say? Appeal to my ego. They're like two cylinders, not over render. So the, the, the term is an under rendered lip is a well rendered lip, a lip that you avoid completely rendering fully with wrinkles and all that business. Um, that's a well rendered lip when you avoid all of that. Okay, so what do we do? We just grab our smudge tool and just go crazy. Making sure to shrink according to each section. And you have almost no radial shading around the mouth. And I said that's fine um, if you're not radially shading by day three. And I'll show you what I mean by radial shading. <clears throat> I'm just uh, blending around the nose just a touch. But if you, if you don't have these really, really important shadows here on the side by day three, you really should take a pause Pause your 14 day challenge and move into some form studies. Really quickly, I'm going to add some discoloration under the eye. And this is there whether or not you're sick, whether or not it's just the slightest little amount. And this is just the healthy amount of skin that you have to keep the eyes mobile. And then we have more really, really important blocks here that are missing. We can see the face from the side has a little indentation just like that. And that's a shadow that happens. Okay, so we have this little indentation of shadow. Do you guys see it? You just got to squint your eyes and you can see it. Just like that right around here. And that is visible on the side. So every single little um, shadow is is responding to some kind of like some some kind of contour change on the surface you don't just get things go dark just because they feel like it or just because they're pigmented that way those are eyebrows that's a texture you're bringing in a fabric eyebrows are like fabric on the face they're not part of the skin I don't mind the the, the height of the lips at all I really don't mind them and that's why um, it's just there's variety in the face. That's why I invite you guys to not paint always, always with this perfect Barbie doll. You can use the perfect Barbie doll shadow template, and that's something I always encourage. Um, and that'll kind of uh, help you figure out where 
all the shadows are, but don't copy that template, face template, and use it as a permanent way to draw your faces. I don't really mind if the, if the lips are a little bit higher than they should be, it looks a lot more natural. And though I don't encourage using references uh, really, really closely for 14 day challenge. I also, I'm looking for a balance. I also don't, I'm not looking for a, uh, a face that is just uh, completely generic. I like, I like the artist to find themselves in that 14 days of study, hopefully 14 days. So I'm going to grab some extra little highlights and let some more of these edges come to life a little bit more down here some more down there. I'm going to add some light wherever the lower, the fattest part of the eyeball on the eyelid is where we start getting light. Just like that. I'm going to jump into liquify and correct the shape of the eye. Very, very symbolic in the upper corner. I'm going to locate the eyebrow bone and the eyebrow arc for the female. You can have this very, very, and I call it a French face. Um, you can have this kind of face, but as long as you keep some of the g uh, gender signatures intact, so before, after, and because you had the eyebrows, inner eyebrow higher than the outer eyebrow, she looked a little desperate or upset, and now we kind of just brought the face back together. Identifying the arc helps you identify the eyebrow bone. Write that back to me. So that means that we're just doing... A little bit of light over here. It seems like she has a, a lot of excessive eye shadow. It doesn't seem like those are her natural shadows around her eyes. And just over here, you see this little eye socket? We need this. So this is all we really need, the shadow of the eyebrow bone and how it merges the sh with the shadow of the eye socket. Here you got a lot of shadow everywhere and you were over representing something that you probably didn't know how to paint yet. And if anything, this piece here has a bit more of a sharpness around the eye socket, an appropriate representation than, than the rest. I'm going to overblend the eyebrows even at their start, and that's because eyebrows start off very gradually. So to a lot of you, this is very common knowledge, but um, the way I see it and the way I improved, how many like 14-day challenge critiques did I do in my lifetime? Like a ton. Um, like at least at least seven a week. Um, and ever since like it's been like what like four years and w the reason why I don't mind all the repetition is because all of that repetition helped me improve and whether or not you think you're a pro yet there's something left that you haven't seen so seeing all of these issues manifest differently between each artist really helps you improve so even for those who who find all of this very common knowledge seeing it in front of you and seeing the before and after will help give you a newfound respect for the fundamentals Right here, I'm adding a light between the eyebrow. It's still a dark neighborhood. I didn't bring in this whole value. I brought in a fraction of it. But yeah, that's something that I worry about a lot, repeating myself too much for those who are around. But to this artist here, to this student, this is all new to them. And though they've seen it a thousand and one times maybe in my videos, they don't really get it until it's done on their work because the work is so personal to them. So when that fundamental becomes attached to their specific uh, art, like instance in their painting, they start appreciating the fundamental in a personal way. And I guess that's the uh, appeal of, of the critique is that they get to see exactly how it affected them personally. It's like a healthy amount of egotism. I want to, if I wanted to, could I jump into a 14 day challenge uh, or should I do form studies first? Um, you just have to, I have, of course, I'd have to look at your work and diagnose it. But if you are, if you find yourself missing shadows on the side of the face like this, then yes, um, you should do some form studies first. I'm going to throw some shadows for the lower eyelid right over here, establishing the edge of the lower eyelid. The darkest part of the lower eyelid is on the outside. It's not on the inside. She also looks like she's really squinting her heart out. So I'm just going to correct that. You don't want your 14 day challenge to be this permanent expression. So I'm going to select these, bring them down, go into the layer underneath and just continue the rest of the eyeball. Continue the rest of this. It'll, it'll look a lot less squinty and tense. And again, you don't, you're not expected of uh, perfect expression and, and, and characterization for a 14-day challenge. 14-day challenge 
please write this back to me, is not a character design challenge. All right, it's a portraiture and form and technique challenge. It is pure sciences. It is not a character design challenge. It's not about you. Trust me, it's about your skill. It's can you just you know give your you give your storytelling a break and just focus on giving yourself some skill, developing some skill. All right, so I need to uh, figure out all of this. This is all so messy. Now that I removed the squint. So give you guys, give yourselves a break from all of this excessive characterization. It's not about that. It's not about your storytelling. It is about knowing what to do with the features, knowing what to do in this kind of lighting, perfecting to the to the T a face. And honestly, you look at all the more popular artists um, from the past and from today. They all know how to draw a face, and that's what the 14-day challenge is all about. That's what inspired Portrait Studio's development, is that so many of my students were having trouble with this simple um, uh, challenge, and every time I tried to explain it, there was something missing. I needed a model to show them how it rotates. So you have that at your disposal now as a resource. I'm going to throw in some highlight underneath the... So I did end up getting Photoshop CC, and I didn't keep it long enough because there was this horrible, horrible liquify bug that it had. And you know me, I use liquify a lot for the paint overs. Um, but I never used it long enough to see whether or not they fixed that stupid control Z problem that changes the layer. Did they fix that in Photoshop CC or not? Okay, so I got rid of that squint. And I'm just cleaning up now anything left over. And this inside here needs to be a little bit more highlighted than the outside. And now I'm going to just see all these blocks just sitting around. It's okay. Let them be there. Let them be there. It's okay. I know they're messy. I know they're messier than you're used to. But you got to let something just, just sit there and marinate a little bit. You might even change the values later. You don't know. Okay. Another big thing about the 14-day challenge, which we will include soon enough in Portrait Studio, is the squint of the, of the iris. The reason why I wanted to leave irises and lashes and hair out of it is because you guys, if I give you the green light for hair, oh god, if I give you a fully, you know, dressed up model, I might as well give you a photo reference. So the beauty of this is that we have a very naked model. Um, naked of accessories, and that's what the 14-day challenge is. That, that's our mission statement, is to see just the form, to no longer see the face, but see a building. So I fix the circular shape of the pupils, and now I'm going to squint the eyes, and we do that by crossing them. So again, this is not a character design challenge. It's not about your storytelling and your original characters. It's not about your uh, Sonic original characters, okay? It's not about your... What else do you, what else do you crazy people do? <laughs> it's not about your... Uh, what else do people do? I don't know. I'm not hip. <laughs> it is fixed? Oh, wow, okay. So I can't, I can't bitch about Photoshop not listening to their consumers anymore, eh? Damn it. All right, so I'm throwing some last-minute little creases here. The deepest part here of the crease of the eyelid, of the upper eyelid, gets a little shadow. And then I'll show you what radial shading means. And I swear to God, if I don't see all these changes applied to your day four, I will follow you home. <laughs> I will follow you home, and I will make you eat anchovies and mustard all right the reason why I said your nose is getting there is because the nostrils look like they're like a different part the thing is with nostrils they got to be big enough so the fact that you make the nostril hole big does not mean the nose gets big okay so this is what it means typically <clears throat> All right, so this is what it means. We're just enlarging the nostril. The nose didn't get enlarged. It's just the nostril. 
Every time I see a nose that an artist has painted and the nostril is tiny, I think, yeah, they need more nose studies. So see that? See how tiny they were? It looks like the nose was swollen, like it was bee stung, and so the nostrils closed up. Nostril is all about function. Write that back to me. Please write it back. It's, it's, it's not about beauty anymore. The nostril hole, you've already decided how big it is with the outline of the nose. The rest is all just function. The nose has to look like it can breathe, and if need be, it can be picked. <laughs> Liberate the nostril, guys. All right. What if you were to breathe life into this character and they got something up their nose? How are they supposed to get it out? Hairy noses are hairy. <laughs> That's a horrifying threat. Yeah. <laughs> anchovies and mustard. At least three cans of anchovies. I love anchovies. But I hate mustard. Except on corn dogs. But I can't have those anymore. Distant dream corn dogs. Stupid non gluten free corn dog. <clears throat> okay, so I enlarged the nostril. I evened out this, this little uh, nose shadow. Also, we don't want the nose shadow to be too long. We want it to be a little bit shorter. So here it's not even at the lips, where here it's way past the lips. Look at what happens. And I just basically mapped out what you did with your cast shadow. Look what happens when I extend the, the, the cast shadow of the nose. It's, it's, it's a beautiful, sexy uh, lighting situation. I give you that. This is just so pretty. This one right here. I love this one. Um, but if it's up here, just enough to cover the eyelids, that means it's right above the lip line. And so exactly the same. Even though her lips are a little bit close to her nose, even then it's still not all the way in front and above the nose. Oh my God, Brussels sprouts are death. Uh, okay, I changed it. Since anchovies are so delicious, I will make it so that if you, I don't forget what the threat was for, but if you don't do what I said to do earlier, I'll make you eat Brussels sprouts and mustard. And they will be overboiled Brussels sprouts. They will be like mush and, and you will not have a good time. It will be, it will be a good teaching tool though, that's for sure. Okay. And then onward to the cheeks. The cheeks need to be indented just a little bit. It doesn't have to be completely, but I don't want her cheeks to look like she's um, only gained weight around her cheeks, especially if her jawline is so clean. And then the calf shadow of the neck needs to be just evened out a little bit. It's a bit too much texture. Kind of just clean that up a little bit. For artists, we tend to do this. We tend to cheat. We tend to give the shadow... Um, like a, an ending much sooner than it should be in this lighting situation. The reason why is we don't want to just draw a big dark cylinder. That's one of the ways we cheat. We give the neck some light and that's fine. No one cares. No one is out there measuring with a little um, Vermeer lighting tool. Nobody, nobody is actually out there measuring whether or not you did it right. People will measure around the face definitely. And then some last minute highlights. Areas you are allowed to bring in highlights. So the tip of the nose the sides of the cheeks, the insides right here. These are the areas you're allowed to bring in some superior light highlights, the specular highlights around the eyes, just like that. You see that suddenly it has all this life to it, so beautiful. And then just up here, that little highlight. And you see down here very, very carefully. And then now I will show you the radial effect. And that means we, for those who don't know what radial shading is, you only caught my recent classes, you just joined my channel, I will not hold back. I will, I will teach the lesson for your sake, okay? For those who know what it is, go grab a, grab a cup of tea or something. Okay, so radial shading is when we have high feed in the color. We start with black um, or whatever your color you're using to darken shadows and in a colored painting. But low opacity. Large brush. I'm using my open and closed... Uh, Square brackets on the keyboard to shrink my brush and brush stroke number one, hardly there. You can't hardly see it, but it's there, trust me. And then brush stroke number two, I've shrunk in my brush. Three, four, I'm shrinking my brush, I'm bringing in more paint, and it feels like the lip is actually dimpled into the cheek. And that's what we want to do with radial values. 
So it can't be a perfect circle all around because it's not a perfectly dimpled. It's not a perfectly dimpled circle. We do have to edit the radial effect just like that and make sure it coincides with that beard shadow I showed you. But just take a look. It looks like she's a human. Look at this sexy effect. Can I get a can I get an applause? Can I get an applause, please? <clears throat> That's that please spend your time on radial values, please. It's it comes with a little bit of practice, so being able to shrink your brush at the right time at, at the at the certain amount of feed. Um so if you've gotten enough value, um then you shrink your brush and it takes a little bit of practice. But I but I promise that um it it even if you're like really crappy at shrinking your brush and you chose the wrong opacity, it'll look good. It'll look better than having a floating mouth just hanging around. Um, so the head still seems a little bit light to me compared to the surrounding landscape, but <laughs> thank you for the applause. <laughs> um, um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's definitely an improvement from where it was before, and I'll show you now. Kind of losing track of what I'm saying. My head's getting too big with these applauses. Before, after. So you had that squint. She looked like she was in pain, like she was looking at something disgusting her. You had this floating black spot. Good job on bringing a black spot, but that's not how we execute it. Um, you had no beard shadow. You had no temple shadows or barely any. And um, going up into the forehead, they were very, very faint. Too much exposure. You need to have a character that's darker. So this value right here, let's find the skin tone equivalent. This is not skin tone. There's nobody whose skin is this light. And please don't give me magazine references. Those, those things are edited beyond an airbrush, beyond recognition. And the exposure is really, really high because they like that big, bright, flashy stuff. Um, but skin tone to the naked eye, classically painted, comes from this modest little it's beautifully saturated. The higher you go, the less saturation you have. See how pale it looks from this beautiful little section right here. All right, from here to here. And let's see where our new values are. Oh, look, in the perfect spot. So when you want to change this face into color, this is where you go to get these beautiful, beautiful mintos. This is a universal, kind of like an olive Mediterranean. It's not so pale. The paler you go, the redder you go. You go up just a little bit higher for the base tone, but it's still very, very gray. And our super highlights are only used in areas where we will have oily, shiny bits that reflect the sunlight in its true shape, in its true form, which is that yellow value. So this is what the 14-day challenge is for, perfecting your ability to radially shade, perfecting your ability to see cylinders and spheres and cubes, perfecting your edge work and understanding of geometry, how it preserves even after the face has been polished and preparing you for transferring into color. Um, also back to form, learning about the relationship between the background and the, and the light source and the object, so that light environment, the three parts of the light environment. <clears throat> um, if you're just starting out, and I just wanna take this opportunity to talk to those who just joined the channel, um, take some time to watch some of the videos because I repeat myself a lot and there's really no one video that goes through that I don't cover at least like five major fundamentals. And it, it, fundamentals don't come in the thousands or even the hundreds. They, they come in just these like possibly like, there's probably like 20 tops, super fundamental, no, 20 fundamentals and their subcategories and like five major fundamentals um, if you were to generalize. It's not a lot. It's stuff that you could cover in a month or two months of intensive study. Intensive study meaning every day you paint a face and you perfect it and get your, uh, um, get your uh, critiques and then try the rotation and on and so forth. Okay, so I didn't polish too much, too much. I left too much. I, le <laughs> I left some areas very, very um, just rough, just to show you that, that I don't always want that polished after look, um, but before, after, all right? And this is the difference between beginner and advanced. You're using every single opportunity to preserve the geometry and make the character feel like if you were to breathe life into it, they would be able to function. They wouldn't be a Frankenstein chasing after you. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's go on to our next painting. When, you, when will your book be out? Um, so I've been talking about that for a while, and I said that it would be out um, December to January, um, if time allows. I will be taking an extensive break in 
January and uh, sorry in December I might have to take a break in January um, and uh, I, I it, it just depends on how much free time I have I might just I don't know pack up and go to a getaway somewhere and just write it and not let myself leave until it's done uh, it's so much to cover but definitely all of those fundamentals that I cover every single class I uh, just will write them all down in a very easy to understand um, eloquent way that you'll be you'll be able to reference it if you learn better with books then you'll have that um, at your disposal as well all right firstly please grayscale that had a little bit of pink to it gross I hate I hate desaturated pink second we've got these very very large I forget that Indonesian culture type large head they try to make their heads larger to copy the aliens that help them yes I believe in aliens <laughs> fuck that shit man there's aliens out there doing stuff teaching us stuff okay all right now that we have that taken care of I'm just making the jawline feel a little bit more visible she has a very strong chin which means a strong jawline it's all in one it's all one thing you can't have a strong chin and like no jaw edges <laughs> JJ is to rock a dance of moist and butt fire <laughs> can you get George R.R. R. Martin to do that <laughs> I don't know, man. What are we going to do with that bastard? <clears throat> yeah, I'm talking to you, George. Get the fuck off here. I don't know. I said, go right the things. All right, so we got this jaw set up. You see, they did radial shading here. Good job. Very good job. But you remember how I erased some of the radial shade after? That's something you need to do. So it's not a perfect circle. So don't keep the radial value perfectly circular for the lips. Write that back to me. That means that you have the radial values this point up, but you kind of erase away the bottom. It's not perfectly radial. You don't keep the perfect circle. Um, that's that's too much of a pit. That only happens on spheres that are perfectly circular. The, 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 this area is not a perfect circle. So we relieve some of that radial value. I'm going to zoom out. We relieve some of that radial value just like so. I'm going to go ahead and just crop because that's bothering me. All right. Wide canvas doesn't zoom properly. Okay. Same exact stuff. I'm just going to use my blocking brush. Capacity is low. Okay, and I'm trying to limit that from feeling like, you know how when you have a freezy, do you guys remember freezies? And you'd have like the blue freezy and your whole mouth this way and this way would just turn blue. Okay, that's what the effect is when you guys don't clean up the radial value on either side. That's what happens. It starts to look like you had a really, really big freezy. Those were some big freezies, though, when we were kids. So now I'm just blending away. I'm keeping my edit polished because the painting has started polished. And so that's why I'm keeping my edit polished. Then there's a really big, massive mistake that is going on here. And that is the cheekbones being so bright all the way out. It, they don't get this bright all the way out. This is highly exposed, really, really sharp cast shadow. So this is like going under the sun. Um, it, it's just like a really, really specific light source. But as you can see, even the highlight doesn't extend all the way to the outside of the cheekbone. So you need to clean that up. So I'm using soft brush here. I'm just trying to match the completion level of the painting. She also looks very old. And that's because her lower eyelids aren't really there. The size of her pupil is massive compared to her eyes. She looks a little bit alien-like. That's because we have missing whites in the eyes. When those go missing, everything just kind of falls apart. Her eyebrows are, are stretched so far up, it seems like she had a facelift. So I'm just going to clean those up just a little bit and get rid of that extensive tail. 
and I'm just going to increase the size of her eyes actually with transform tool. <coughs> so it's all about designing a character and you don't really get a break when you're an illustrator. You have to be able to draw everything. I'm going to thicken her eyebrows up as well. I don't want her to look like a, she's lost all her hair, which is a, a, an age signature as well. She kind of looks sad now. I'm just raising one eyebrow up. And then I'm going to not let her mouth be so down, as in a, a frown. Okay, I'm going to throw that shadow under the eyelid. And I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, but I will try my best to show that there is more white to be seen around this area here. Just like so. Okay, so I'm just blocking that. Um, and then I'm going to take care of the eye size. I'm going to try to balance one eye first. And then uh, match the other one after. Okay, that pupil is still massive. It looks like she has those pupil contacts that make you look like an alien. <clears throat> But at least it's a movement forward from that aged, kind of old lady looking face. And then I'm going to clean up around here. Next big problem that you have is you're misrepresenting the sphere that all of this happens on. So the top of the head, it gets to be too dark. And so I'm just going to clean that up, make it a little bit brighter. Then we move down here. And then I'm um, going to make sure all the shadows are pulling towards the bottom. Darken. All right. So slight little changes today, but they've all added up. I recommend, just like what I did earlier with the face, um, uh, creating some edge work around the nose, giving the nose nostrils some size, decreasing the size of the pupil. That's just way too big. It, it feels like we can't talk to her feels like there's no relationship because she's so stiff like um, and mannequin like which is what happens when your eyes get this big um, it just doesn't feel like someone we can talk to we lose the relationship with the character the more the white of the eyes that is missing um, it kind of makes us trust them less but I'll show you the before and after so before um, delete guide see that disproportion that we have everywhere. We need to take care of that. Before, it seems like she had white paint just like tossed on her face around her eyes. It seemed like an editorial kind of paint and the lower eyelid was deliberately hidden by a lot of foundation. You can't afford to lose a lower eyelid, not day 3.75 of the 14 day challenge, okay? You need some highlights like I showed you earlier. Her jawline was missing. Her mouth looked very angry and sad and she had that kind of facelift eyebrow, uh, not very young looking face, old lady looking thing. Okay? Lots of changes today. But I hope you guys are starting to see kind of like how every single face is similar with the way it produces shadows because all the skeletons are similar. Now we're going to look at something completely different. Um, which is a landscape and I want to look at some more landscapes as we go because our monthly challenge Which is not really monthly. It's like a two-month challenge now for the holidays is the Christmas um, Themed or holiday themed busy town um, It's also not what you think it is. There's a twist You have to make sure that the characters are all unique looking nothing that we've seen before in Holiday movies and stuff like that. So you're designing an entire environment. It's an entire environment slash landscape design uh, but what I'm doing here is I'm trying to show you how this entire region should have had some of this fog as well. Normal. Because the shadow 
of this um, of this character here was being was was too close to the shadow of the base of the tree. So the base of the tree needs to do you need to show that it, that the fog is just mostly focused towards the bottom. The person who uploaded this also said that they're having a lot of trouble with the color. The colors are not appealing. So I'm going to mess around really quickly. I'm not sure how to do it. I, I never do this. Um, curves. Um, the blue. I'm going to just increase towards the blues. It's going to leave all those yellows intact, intact because the blue can't really mess with the yellows. It's the last color that it fights. See how much you, you need a lot of blue before that yellow finally changes. So you can leave that yellow alone because that's what the light is touching. So this is where it was before. This is when we're minimizing the presence of blue. And this is when we're, we're kind of desaturating as we bring in the blue. This might have been the reason why you didn't like your colors so much. So merge down. Now it feels a little bit more like an eerie atmosphere. If you were going for that ghostly dragon country type of thing from uh, Quest for Camelot. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. Queen for Camelot. Quest for Camelot dragon country. I just love the way they designed it. It was just this big green mess. Um, it's beautiful, right? Look at that. Um, if you're going for that. Also the elephant graveyard from, uh, from the Lion King. Where is it? Um, really just eerie, eerie, murky colors. Really that desaturated, lots and lots of uh, fog everywhere. But they pretty much have that creepy little uh, desaturation in the background, low hanging clouds, not really rain, which is a beautiful thing to look at, and not sunshine, which is even more beautiful in story storytelling anyway. Um, uh, so it, you, you have all of that to, to work from, to pull from. You can still have a lot of blue and have a lot of this color. Um, this might have been the reason why you didn't like your values so much. I would go for blue. You know me, I love blue. Um, and desaturate some of the whites. Um, that's because the light is hitting them. They get to be a little bit too yellow. I would leave the white for the midtones and desaturate everything else. I would also desaturate some of the fog just a touch, desaturate the other side, and maybe saturate some of the tree branches that are getting some light, just like that, and just at the very top, wherever the light is coming from. This might have been all that you needed. Um, also, the shadows in the background just get to be way too close to the object in the foreground. Think thumbnails. So I'm just going to throw one big little motion of value just on top. Of everything as if it was just all under a film or like this see-through thing this might help you um, it really just depends on what you want to do with your painting I'm not understanding why if the light is coming from this direction this is light and this is dark it should be the opposite this should be dark because that's the cat shadow of the tree on the wall behind and this should be all of the lit stuff that way you actually have a cast shadow for the tree see what that does to the environment it's beautiful cast shadows are the best um, and then some of that cast shadow might be on the fog which is really cool that you might do um some of this branch might event this this bark might eventually have relieved been relieved of the cast shadow of the bark so it gets some light to it and now you have a bit of a cast shadow being revealed. Of course, you're going to have to blur that in. Um, anywhere else where that happens, wherever the branch gets out of the way and lets some of the shadow through. Um, you can also show the shape of some of these branches. So actually shape, show some branches. Show some branches. And uh, just the shape of the tree, which may also help you out. This green isn't going to work out. That's not going to work out. We either have l enough light to show green or we don't. So that green in the trees, it might be acceptable because it's so high up catching some light. But down here, there isn't enough color in the environment to show that green. So just go ahead and turn it into a uh, little bit of a purple. Or just throw some blue, blue on it. Blue takes away a lot of the 
yellow in a, in a, in a formula of a color. Okay, so any questions at all? <laughs> uh, but why the yellow color is the last one to get to trouble with the blue? Because yellow has a w wider value? Um, no, because yellow and blue are really close to being uh, complementaries. So we've got yellow and orange. And this really wasn't blue. It's, I call it blue because it's general. This is more of a purple. And purple are yellow, and yellow are complementaries. So in order for purple to fight yellow, they need a lot of it. They need a lot of that color equal and more to finally overrun yellow. But yellow will always fight blue. And that's why doing working with the curves delays the movement of the yellow. But all the other colors are neighboring purple. So they get infected quicker. So... Yep, this might be why you didn't like it. I hope this helps you. You had values on the lower part of the tree way too close to the foreground. Foreground is always darker than background. This has more atmosphere. This has more storytelling. And here we're looking at like a dragon country type of uh, color palette. So in the old one, let me just um, do this and do that and do this and do that. Okay. So we had more of a this kind. And if that's what you wanted, then everything would be foggy. You see how even the foreground is a little bit not that dark? Everything's very foggy in Dragon Country. If you haven't seen this movie, like, go watch it. It's just the best movie ever. It's so good. I love the way they design people in this movie. How they design the enemies and stuff. It's called Quest for Camelot. I grew up on that movie. Um, but yeah. Alright, before, after... Um, so that's it for today, but uh, for those who want to join the challenges, who th for those who want to join um, the community, you just have to go to istabrak.com. Let me get you guys set up. Um, istabrak.com. And uh, click on the little Google Plus icon and head over there. Join the community. Please follow the rules. We're hitting 7,000, but we are already at 7,000 members. Um, so if we don't follow the rules, there will be chaos and mayhem. And though, yes, anarchy is a very appealing concept, it's not fun when you're in the thick of it and none of your work gets critiqued. So please make sure you follow the rules and upload once a day. If you're uploading sketches, do not upload a single standing sketch, especially for the coming challenge. But for the challenge, um, it is called a busy holiday fantasy town. And the key is that you are uh, designing a town that the, the, the twist is that it's going to be an unusual town and you're not allowed to use traditional Christmas symbols. So no Santa hats and none of that of, you know, that, that, that green and, and red garland, typical fantasy, I mean, p typical Christmas stuff that you would see in Whoville. But you can borrow from the Grinch and the fact that Whoville is made up of weird people that it's not humans. Uh, so please read through this. Um, it's hella fun. It's fully colored. You get a resource pack you can download. And um, it's just I just want you guys to have fun and um, finally work with something that has lots and lots of color, lots of character design um, and environment all combined into one. You get two months to do it. And uh, all the information is on the announcement. So just scroll down to the announcement category right here, read through it and join. I've, see, I've seen that some people are already designing the little people, which is so cool. You're choosing a separate canvas to design them. I love that. And um, I think that's it. That's it for today. I'm not sure if I have a question. Um, do you recommend jumping into challenges or doing form studies? I think I answered that already. Um, I think, yeah, that's it for today. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, I did have one last little thing. Our, our Patreon goal has changed into patrons now and we're aiming for a thousand patrons. So if you want to give back to the community and support, um, you can even choose the lowest tier and become a patron. And Portrait Studio is officially out. The, the update is out, but part two will be out very, very soon. We're just polishing some last minute things. So I love you guys so much. I didn't want to delay it even one more day. I said, Abu, make it into two parts and we'll just send out the stuff and, and, uh, and complete the rest of the update later. Just send out whatever you have and then we'll uh, fix stuff as, you, as we go. If you find any bugs, please report them on the community um, form submission. I believe we have a form submission. Nope, we have a form submission in the store. Oh, this is going to be the manual for Portrait Studio. Okay, I was just taking care of that. Um, this, you go into the store, you scroll down. Uh, having trouble getting everything set up? 
please make sure you use this and not Facebook or anything else like that. But that's it, I promise. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a great day, guys. Bye.